How's it going there, YouTube? Coming at you with a really important video today talking about filters. I know there's a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings about how your HPF, high pass filter, LPF, low pass filter, your subsonic filter, creating a band pass filter, DB per octave, roll off, your slope. There's a lot of things that I think a lot of people don't fully understand of how all that works and how to get the most out of your amplifier when setting up these settings. So I'm going to go through all of that and uh, make sure that uh, if you have any questions, ask, all right, uh, because this is important stuff to understand how to get your system sounding its best and how to get it to perform optimally. Without further ado, let's get loud. All right, so we're gonna be drawing out filters here because I think there's still a big misunderstanding as far as how your filters work. I'm talking your LPF, low pass filter, your HPF, high pass filter, uh, your subsonic filter, and band pass filters, which are important if you're setting up a, a proper sound stage and you're mixing um, different size speakers and components together with different cutoff frequencies. It's important to understand the concept between, between how your filters work. Now, there's a couple things that need to be understood in regards to filters. Um, all filters, whether it's a high pass filter, low pass filter, subsonic filter, they all have something called a slope, okay? You may have seen dB slash octave roll off. Uh, you know, how many dBs per octave uh, does it drop when it surpasses a certain frequency, etc. So we're gonna explain what exactly that is and uh, go into the basics first of what exactly is an octave and then what exactly roll off is and how that affects you setting your filters and also affects your soundstage. All right, so very simply, an octave is one octave above or below a specific frequency. For example, let's take 50 hertz, okay? One octave above 50 hertz would be 100 hertz, all right? A half octave, for example, of 50 hertz would be 25 hertz. So that's a half octave, and between 50 to 100 hertz, that's a full octave, okay? So that's one half, and that's full. All right, now, why is that important? It's because filters work off your octaves and give you a specific dB per octave roll off, okay? You'll see uh, 6 dB, you'll see 12 dB, you'll see 24 dB. These are the most common uh, dB per octave roll offs that you'll see. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, this is what it means. So what you'll see with a filter, let's say we're talking about a low pass filter. Sometimes you'll see it described as uh, 6 dB uh, per octave, okay? That's how you'll see it written sometimes, right? Whether it's 6 dB, 12 dB, 24 dB per octave, all right? And what that means is, let's say for example, okay, you have a low pass filter. Let's say you're running subwoofers. And let's say your LPF is set at, gosh, let's just say 80 hertz, okay? And it has a six decibel per octave roll off, okay? Now, what that means is when you set your LPF, that means it will pass everything under 80 hertz, okay? With full attenuation, okay? Meaning it hasn't, the, ga the gain hasn't been attenuated because it is passing everything below 80 hertz. Now, anything above 80 hertz, that doesn't mean that there's like a cliff or a brick wall and nothing is gonna be passing above 80 hertz. That's where this comes into play, okay? That means that one octave above 80 hertz, which is what? That's 160 hertz. So exactly one octave above where you have your filter set 80 hertz, it's going to be six dB quieter, okay? So for example, Okay, so you have your LPF set. Let's go all the way down to zero. Now, keep in mind, we don't have your subsonic filter yet. So you're gonna get full signal all the way at 80 hertz, and then one octave beyond 80 hertz, it's gonna be six dB 
quieter, okay? Does that make sense? So yes, your subwoofers will still play 100 hertz, they'll still play 120 hertz, they'll still play 150 hertz, they'll still play 160 hertz, it'll just be 6 dB quieter, all right? Now, they have, like we talked about, not only 6 dB per octave, but they have 12 dB, they have 24 dB, and you know, there's some in between as well. But let's just talk about this. So for example, again, this is 6 dB per octave roll-off. If you were dealing with a 12 dB per octave roll-off, okay, this will still be the same. However, at the 80 hertz point where you have your filter set, it's gonna drop off a little bit steeper, okay? 12 dB. Now, if you're dealing with a 24 uh, dB per octave filter, Okay, let's say you have your LPF set at 80, it'll still play 80, and then at 80, it's gonna drop off even steeper. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? That means at one full octave, which in this case is 160 hertz, it's gonna be a lot quieter. It's not gonna play 160 hertz as loud as if you had a LPF with a 12 dB per octave roll off or a 6 dB per octave roll off, okay? So just think of this, like, you know, jumping or kind of like rolling off a hill. This one's rolling off, you know, a little steeper mountain. And this one's kind of rolling off a cliff, okay? Is your frequencies are just going to start cutting off and rolling off a lot steeper. And it's going to play any frequency above 80 hertz quieter, quicker, if that makes sense. All right, now let's talk about your high pass filter. Basically the same thing, right? Except going in this direction, it's going to go in this direction. Let me explain. So let's say, for example, you have your HPF on your door speakers. Let's say you're running some six and a halfs in your doors or whatever the case may be, and you have your filter set, let's say for, I don't know, well, let's do 200 hertz just to make some simple math here, okay? 200 hertz you have your HPF filter for, so everything above 200 hertz is going to be played through your speakers at full volume or full gain. Sorry, it's not gonna be attenuated. But anything under 200 hertz, the, the slope is going to be attenuated depending on how much dB per octave. So let's look at it like this. So you have your HPF set at 200 hertz, right? So at 100 hertz, which is one full octave below 200, if you have a six dB roll off, it's going to look like that, okay? Kind of shallow. If you have a 12 dB per octave roll off, right? You're gonna come, 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 and it's gonna drop off a little steeper, okay? If you have a 24 per octave roll off, it's gonna get even steeper than that, okay? Which means what? Just like we talked about in the LPF, your speakers will still play frequencies below 200 hertz, even though you have them HPF at 200, it's just that the, the signal is going to be attenuated and it's going to be quieter. Now, remember, the higher dB per octave, the quieter it's going to get quicker. And it, at 100 hertz, for example, um, let's take 6 and 12. So it's going to be considerably quieter at 100 hertz with the 12 decibel per octave roll-off filter versus a 6 decibel per octave roll-off filter. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's talk about something that's really important that I think a lot of people don't understand. All right, when you're dialing in your system, it's important to understand that you have your sub stage, you have your sometimes rear stage, and then you have your front stage. Okay, you have three different stages. Now, a lot of people, me included really, I don't have a rear stage. Uh, my rear door speakers are tied in with my front stage. And a lot of people, they just run their front doors and pillars and then their sub stage. So for simplification, let's just get rid of the rear stage for now. So you got your sub stage and you got your front stage. So what you want to do is to have those two stages work together in perfect harmony and not have a big void of frequencies. Okay, you don't want a big hole in your frequencies where you're missing out on a lot of the frequencies around you know, 100, 150, 200 hertz, whatnot, right? You want to be able to make sure to blend it together to create as much continuity as possible, okay? So this is what it looks like and why it's important to understand your roll-off and how you set 
your, your uh, LPF and your HPFs so that that way you don't create that big of a gap, okay? Let me get into it right here. All right, I'm just gonna do two different examples. I'm gonna do one where your filters are six decibels per octave roll off, and I'm gonna do a second example where you're running a 24 decibel per octave roll off, okay? I understand there'll be some in between, you'll have 12, you'll have 18, right? But I'm gonna do kind of the two extremes of both so you can see how that's gonna affect your sound stage and how you can manipulate your filters to kind of bring them closer together. So in the first example, we're gonna, oh my gosh, my pen just gave up on me. So in the first example, we're gonna do a six dB per octave roll off example, okay? Let's say you have your subwoofer LPF at 100 Hertz and you have your front stage HPF, let's just say at 200 Hertz. I like easy numbers, okay? You guys can manipulate it later to specifics but these are just very simple numbers. So with a six dB per octave roll off, this is how it's gonna look, okay? So imagine your frequency scale here. You got, okay, all the way from zero hertz, you got 50 hertz, you got 100 hertz, you got 150 hertz, you got 200 hertz, you got 250 hertz, okay? That's your scale. Oh gosh, this pen sucks ass. Okay, there's your scale, okay? So when you have your LPF set for 100 Hertz, that means, okay, your filter is set right here, okay? So what's gonna happen is at 100 Hertz at 6 dB, okay, per octave, so all the way up to 200 Hertz, it's gonna, you're gonna get uh, full signal, full signal, full signal, then at 100, it's gonna start dropping off until you get to 200 Hertz, which is gonna be 6 dB quieter. Okay, now let's say your HPF is also running a 6 dB per octave filter, okay? But it's HPF at 200, so you're gonna get full signal, full signal, full signal, full signal. Then at 200, you're gonna start dropping off until you're one octave lower, it's gonna be 6 dB quieter, okay? So you can kind of ignore that line there. So what it would look like is this, boom, and then Boom, okay? So you'll have all these frequencies basically playing full volume. You'll have these frequencies playing full volume and there'll be a little bit of a null right there, a little bit of a void, right? Because your LPF is gonna start cutting off those frequencies and your HPF is gonna start cutting out those frequencies. So anywhere between 100 and 200 Hertz, there's gonna be a little bit of a null in your music where it's gonna be a little bit quieter than the rest. Now. If you understand how that works, okay, and if you want a constant signal or gain, well, guess what? You can use this to your advantage because if you have your filter, your LPF set at 100 and you have your HPF set at 200, you know that it's going to cross right in between at 150 hertz, right? So guess what you can do, okay? That's why having a graphic equalizer or some kind of equalizer is important because now what you can do is you know that if you do some basic math, okay, right here, is going to be negative three dB quieter, right? Halfway, a half octave is gonna be negative three dB. So what you can do, you can go to your head unit, you can select 150 Hertz or anything around that. A lot of uh, equalizers, if you have big equalizers with a lot of bands, um, you'll have around 150 Hertz. What you can do is you can go to your head unit and you can go plus one, plus two, plus three dB Okay, now what that's gonna do is that's gonna raise, oh, that's gonna raise this up, okay, up here back to your baseline. And the cool thing is if your graphic EQ on your head unit, let's say it's a six dB per octave roll off, that's basically gonna elevate all this back up so you'll have one solid straight signal and you won't have any null or any void in your frequency range, all right? Now, does that make sense? I hope so. Now let's go to example two here and use a 24 dB per octave roll off. All right, so same thing, except the only difference is, okay, in, in the six dB per octave, right, you had a nice kind of smoother transition. With a 24 dB per octave roll off, okay, it's gonna be more like this, okay? So your valley is gonna be a lot deeper 
with your 24 dB per octave roll-off than it is with your 6 dB per octave roll-off. So just understand that if you are using 24 uh, dB per octave roll-off when you're setting your frequencies, um, you're going to have a deeper valley and, and void. So these frequencies are going to be considerably quieter than it would be over here, right? There's going to be a bigger gap um, in your front stage and sub stage. And it's going to be more noticeable. Now, if you have a graphic EQ, right, you can do the same thing. Figure out what the cross point is, which half octave um, halfway should be 12 dB. So, you know, you can compensate by in increasing whatever this frequency is. You can increase it, you know, X amount of dB to try to bring it back up so that you have a more uh, balanced uh, frequency response across the spectrum here. But uh, also what you can do too, is you can start tweaking. So, you know, instead of crossing over at 100, well, maybe push it to 125, right? And that'll bring it up this way a little bit more. And instead of crossing over at 200, maybe try dropping it down to 150 and that'll bring it a little bit closer, right? So you don't have as much as a gap there. So that is my quick explanation, you know, down and dirty as far as setting crossovers properly, um, utilizing your dB per octave slopes and having an understanding of it. Um, I'm gonna get into one more thing really quick and then we'll call it a day. All right, so I just wanted to talk about these four different filters um, for anybody that may be new and doesn't understand, you know, what exactly it is. So your subsonic filter, it basically protects your speakers from playing frequencies that they're not supposed to play, okay? Think about 15 hertz, 20 hertz, things like that. Um, sure, there's some big subs and big setups that, you know, can play that low and, uh, you know, they'll be fine doing it. But for the average person that, you know, doesn't know how to do that properly, okay, you can save yourself a very expensive mistake, okay? So, yes, there are different mathematical formulas and things you can do. But um, what I recommend, okay, is if you're running any kind of ported enclosure, find out what your port tuning frequency is. Let's say you're running a subwoofer enclosure with a port tuning frequency of 35 hertz, okay? Simple enough. What I would do, okay, again, to protect your investment is to set that uh, subsonic frequency to anywhere between 30 to 35 hertz. Now, I know some people are gonna say, oh, well, that's way too high. I wanna play, you know, 20 hertz, 25 hertz. Well, guess what? You can, all right? That doesn't mean, remember, it's not a, a brick wall that your frequency is gonna hit. It'll still play, if you have your subsonic set to 30 hertz, it's still gonna play 25 hertz, 20 hertz. It's just not gonna get full signal, so you're not gonna ruin your subwoofers. Because let's face it, if you have a subwoofer in a ported enclosure and you play it below port tuning freak, you're gonna get overexertion, okay? Your X max is gonna go beyond its mechanical limits potentially, and you can ruin your gear. And you don't wanna do that, okay? So even if you have your, your, your uh, enclosure tuned to 35 hertz and you set it for, let's say 32 hertz, you're still gonna be able to play 28 hertz, 25 hertz. It just won't be as damaging to your subwoofer because it's going to be cutting the signal a bit, okay? So real basic there. Find what your port tuning frequency is and set your subsonic right around there, okay? Hope that made sense. Your LPF, obviously, everybody should know what that is, right? That's low pass. That means it passes frequencies below the, the point that you set it to. Okay, and then everything else, you got the roll off that we talked about. HPF, same thing, just on the other end of the spectrum. It's gonna pass everything above whatever you set your HPF to, and it's gonna roll off the frequencies below it. Band pass, if you wanna set up a legit band pass, okay, I'm talking where you're just running mids and you're running your tweeters separately, okay? So if you're just running six and a half or eight inch door speakers and you want them to play just for easy numbers, let's say between 200 to 2000 Hertz. Okay. That mid range, mid bass frequency. So what you would do is very simple. Okay. You would set your LPF higher than your HPF. So you would set your LPF to 2000 Hertz and you'd set your HPF down to 200 Hertz. Okay. And that's how you create a band pass is you set your HPF lower than you would your LPF. And everything in there is gonna get full signal. And then what's gonna happen, it's gonna look like this, 
on the slope. I swear to God, I'm going to break this pen in half when I'm done. <laughs> okay, so that's how it's going to look, all right? So down here, you would have 200. Up here, you would have your 2,000. And everything below that, it's going to roll off. Everything above 2,000, it's going to roll off. Again, that looks pretty steep. That's probably 24 dB per octave. If it was 12 dB, it would look like that. 6 dB, like that. 12 dB, 6 dB would depend on how steep it is. So that's really it. All I got for you guys. I hope uh, everybody has a better understanding of how your filters work, how your dB per octave slope works, and how you can manipulate your graphic EQ and equalizer head unit, adjusting your filter frequencies to create the perfect balanced soundstage. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn on those notifications. And uh, don't forget to join me next time so you can figure out how to get loud, take your ride to the next level. Let's get loud.